Hey guys, even here, and this video we're gonna start with Kai Green update. I know many of you will get upset for even mentioning him. Nick's strength and power seems like won't mention him, and I do respect that, but I don't have that many subscribers or views. I just have to take whatever I can, and it is a Kai Green update. But here is the thing, guys, honestly, with me and Kai. So when when I started following bodybuilding, it was about 2011, 2012, and at that time, Phil Heat versus Kai Green rivalry was about to start. It was pretty much getting heated up and ever since I started following bodybuilding I was a fan of Phil Heath, I didn't like Kai. Sure, Phil was cocky and arrogant and you couldn't really like him as much as you could like Jay Cutler or Dorian Yates, yeah, but I definitely didn't like Kai Green at all. I always thought he was fake and disingenuous, so I didn't really like him and I don't like him now, but I do like his physique, in my opinion, personally, he is the fifth best physique of all time. I'd say Ronnie Coleman, Phil Heath, Dorian Yates, Jay Cutler and then Kai Green. Uh, I think Kai Green is better than Flex or Kevin or Dexter. I just think he's better than all those guys that he, when he was at his best. And right now, is he at his best? I don't know, but he does look absolutely phenomenal here. Not only the front part, you can see that his abs are really prominent and his waist looks pretty small, right? For Kai Green, yeah. There is no bubble gut, I mean he's flexing it, he's holding it. I don't know if he would be able to control it during the transitions on a stage, but here in this shot he is doing it well. Chest, even though he's not known for having the fullest chest, it does look pretty full. Arms are looking decent, overall he is big, he has mass and he is very conditioned. You can see his legs and calves, he has a lot of muscle there and also you can see his back in the, in the mirror behind. And it is huge of course, but Kai is known for the back, that was his best body part, especially the lats. So he has all the mass, he didn't lose anything, and he's very conditioned right now. I don't know if he's only planning to stay like this year round and to show off uh, for Instagram, or he plans on competing again. I don't... I, how, why would it be impossible? Why would it be impossible? Yeah, he said it a million times and he was just messing around, or maybe this time he does it without saying anything. I mean, a lot of interviewers tried to actually get it out of him, to, to say what he wants to do, will he come back to the Mr. Olympia, and he would always find a way to dodge the question, saying stuff like, I don't know, we're gonna see, it. some things have to line up, blah blah blah, he was always very philosophical, he basically became an expert for dodging a question, so we don't know for a fact, but based on what he looks like right now, he could, he could come back and do really well at the Arnold Classic Mr. Olympia or any show really. Can he win the Mr. Olympia? I don't think it's impossible. Based on these physique updates that I saw recently, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's very possible. He has the mass that he had before. I don't know if he's gonna translate to the stage, but he, based on what I see, I can't say it's impossible. So I can definitely see him winning the Mr. Olympia, and I would love to see him back on stage. Doesn't matter how many times he teased us, he lied to us, he, he tried to deceive us. I mean, talking about potentially competing so more people would watch his Instagram posts so he can advertise his ebooks and sell it to us and earn money from deceiving us, from lying. You gotta hate him for that. I mean, that's really lame. That, that's just bad. So he doesn't really have many fans these days. He has a lot of people who follow him, who like his physique, but his personality, nobody likes him. Everybody hates him and it's normal. But if you talk about his physique, it does look phenomenal, and it can be a top Mr. Olympia physique if he finally decides to compete. What do you guys think? Is this a... Let's not ask the question, is he gonna come back? Let's not talk about that. Could he do well at the Mr. Olympia with this physique? Tell me about that. Not sure about Kai, but Hari Chupan? Sure, he can do it. Yes. Look at him right now. 17 weeks out of Mr. Olympia. God damn, he looks absolutely insane. I mean, look at the level of conditioning. He has a little bit of water, almost no fat. Like, he's already ready. I mean, how much, how many weeks out? Is it like two weeks out? Yeah? He's ready. I mean, I don't know how he's keeping, how he's maintaining this much, uh, this much mass without getting a little bit chubby. So he's staying super lean in the off season, and he just keeps all the mass. He gets bigger. I think he's bigger. I think he can be bigger at the Mr. Olympia stage this year. And last year he had those visa issues. He wasn't sure if he's gonna be able to travel to the Mr. Olympia. So in the last minute he learned that he can. Then he showed up and he was fourth, which was amazing. But imagine how good would he look if he knew 
that he's going to be competing. It's really hard to prep if you don't know if you're going to be com competing. But then again, it's probably not that hard for him to prep because he's two weeks out like in the offseason. He is a bodybuilder all year round. A lot of bodybuilders relax in the offseason and some of them have to get a little bit choppy to make progress. Not Hadi. He stays lean year round and massive. He gets a little bit watery, but that's about it. I don't think he needs to lose more than 10 pounds for the Mr. Olympia to be a top shape. 10, 15 pounds tops because he does weigh a lot. He's probably like 250 right now. For his height, uh, that's, that's a lot. I mean, if that's how much he weighs, but I would guess something like that. He's very short, but he packs an, an insane amount of muscle in his frame. And he has the maturity. He has the granity, the, the gnarly, the grainy look that you're looking for. I mean, if you talk about the best, the ideal type of muscle, this guy has it. He absolutely does. Uh, as far as the politics of the Mr. Olympia, him being from Middle East, that's not gonna make a difference. We know that because Big Remy just won the Mr. Olympia, but not being able to speak perfect English or English at all. I mean, Big Remy doesn't speak perfect English. He speaks English, but it's not very fluent. It was enough to win the Mr. Olympia. Hadi, I don't think he speaks any English, I never heard him try to speak, he always has a translator, so that is a problem, but I don't know if the judges are looking at that. I think the judges would give him the victory if he was an apparent winner, if it was very close between him and somebody who speaks English, very very close, maybe the judges would pick the guy who speaks English better. By the way, these videos are taken from his YouTube channel, just Hadi Chupan, type it, subscribe, and this is also something he posted, but this has to be from his previous prep. And just look at this conditioning, just look at the details, I mean, the deep cuts. Look at this! Jeez, this is just insane, this is crazy! So this is what I'm talking about when I say maturity, granity, grainy look. Nobody has this, really. Today, in bodybuilding, Big Rabbi hasn't got it. I mean, Brandon Curry, not even close. Phil Heath maybe kind of does, but with his midsection it's only getting worse. I don't think he can beat Hadi this year, no, no, I don't think so. Bonac, no, I can definitely see Hadi winning the Mr. Olympia, but I think it's safe to say that he is basically top 3 right now. Next, we have Charles Griffin, who is 8 weeks out of Chicago Pro, and these arms are getting seriously big, like, he talked about this, he always had amazing arms, really big arms, and he never really trained them directly, and this offseason he decided to push them to the max, he was like, Let's just make them insanely big, why not? And uh, I like that, I love huge arms, and now <laughs> he definitely has them. And he's kind of short and blocky, and his arms are short, so it, it, it just makes it look even freakier. But because look at his biceps and the triceps, like it's just one big circle, right? I mean, it's just a circle, it's forming a circle with his arms. So that's how big his arms are, just imagine this, just, just absolutely insane. Uh, I don't know how good will he look on stage, because he doesn't really have the best structure, but is he gonna have the best arms on that stage? I'm pretty sure, yeah. That update was four days ago, and this is the more recent one, so again, <sighs> insane arms, and his conditioning is getting good, so we haven't really seen him since 2019, and uh, I expect him to be much better this year. Uh, can he win Chicago Pro? No. Can he be second after Hunter Labrada? Sure. I can see him being second. Can he beat Hunter? Not very likely, no. His legs are not very good, the overall the structure, as I said, blocky type of waist, you know, not, not ideal, but a lot of muscle, a lot of density can get conditioned, and I think he can be top two at the best. Alright, now we get to the fun part. Drama. Drama and bodybuilding. I know you guys love it. So, Sergio Oliva posted this physique update. Before we get to the whole drama part, first let's take a look at this. So he's not doing the Chicago Pro as he planned, which is great news for Charles Griffin, but not for the rest of us. So no Chicago, he's gonna be doing Arnold Classic, and this is gonna be his last physique update. Right now he looks absolutely phenomenal, he looks big, he looks really big. I mean, he got up to the size of like Steve Kuklo, it reminds me a lot of him, because they're both kind of taller guys, and I don't know, he's probably around 300 pounds right here, so that's a lot. He's a big bodybuilder. There are a lot of bodybuilders who are short, who look massive on the stage, but when you see them in person, they don't really look that big. Not the case with Sergio. He's a big bodybuilder, and right now, here, he looks dry. Like, I don't know if he maybe dehydrated himself to take this photo, 
But uh, yeah, the body fat percent can be lower for a show, but he's not competing anytime soon, so it doesn't have to be lower, but he does look very dry. He does look dry and he looks really big, so this photo is a threat to everybody who's gonna be doing the Arnold Classic, because based on what he looks like right now, he can maybe even win that show if it's not super stacked lineup, if you don't have somebody like Rolly Winkler or one of the top guys like Bonek, I don't know. Maybe he can beat Bonek though, but Rolly, I don't think so, and the other top, let's say top three, top four guys, but as far as the top seven, eight, he can be right there in the Mr. Olympia, so I can definitely see him being at the top callouts uh, at the Arnold Classic this year. And now let's get to the, to the drama part, I know you're, you're enjoying... <laughs> But now let's get to the drama part, so I'm sure you're interested in that. So his caption here, it says, You're allowed to have your own opinions, but you're not allowed to have your own facts. Again, sorry to my fans who won't see me in July. Progress pick to hold you till September. Going for broke. Coming correct. So this is probably referring to Fuad Abiyad and, and Nick Walker. How and why is he talking about these guys? It's because in their podcast, Fuad Abiyad and Nick Walker said that uh, Sergio is not going to be doing Chicago before Sergio made the announcement. And so then he made a video talking about these two guys, calling them out, saying a lot of bad stuff about Fuad and then saying stuff about Nick Walker. What he said basically in that video was that the lineup at the New York Pro wasn't very deep and that he has all these people in his corner telling him that he is much better than he is. Of course, Nick heard about it and gave us his response, but before we get to that, I'm gonna show you what Sergio posted. So he posted a photo of himself with Sas Hairati, saying that Sas looked like this and he was fifth at the Arnold when Sergio competed. So basically this means that top 5 at the, at the New York Pro was much better than it was this year when Nick won it, basically discrediting Nick. Pretty much, yeah, but he says here, people get so upset when you say facts. I'm sorry I'm talking about your favorite bodybuilder, meaning of course Nick Walker. Doesn't mean I'm lying when I say the shows have been weak. I'm not attacking anyone, I said it's not the winner's fault, they still killed it. Blah blah blah. So in his video, he said literally that he has people in his corner telling him that he's better than he is and that the lineup is depleted, the shows are weak. And now he's saying Nick killed it, everybody else was off. So what is it, Sergio? <laughs> it seems like he's trying to get out of the mess that he created, but he said those things clearly. And Nick knows that. Nick is not stupid. He, he heard what he heard. So he posted this post saying, nothing weak, coming in 17 weeks. And then you have Sergio trying to kiss Nick's butt to get himself out of the situation. He realized that he made a mistake with Nick. So he says, there's nothing weak about your physique now. Bro, I only praised you and stuck up for you all year. Stop twisting me, calling your competition weak to you being weak. I said several several times, you killed it. Anyone who's ever talked uh, bad about you on my page, I shut them down. Blah, blah, blah. So he says, I didn't even know this was directed at, at me until we watched Nick Strength and Power. Then he tells him to text him privately. So apparently now he's saying that he only said these things about the lineup, not about Nick. But in the video, he said it differently. You can guys watch the video, Nick can watch the video. We know what he said. He's trying to get himself out of this mess. But, you know, Sergio is like that. I mean, he has always been crying and complaining about stuff. It seems like he has some serious anger issues. And he should definitely go to a, to a therapist and try to fix those. Because it seems like a big problem. He should not have reacted the way he reacted. But anyways, Nick responds to him, to his comments, saying uh, In one of your last comments, you clearly stated Justin got screwed at the New York Pro, correct? And ev even after we had the, what I thought was a good conversation, the next day you make another post towards me how weak lineup was. Uh, so again, after we chatted, you disrespected me and all other competitors in that show. And then Sergio says that he was talking about Justin at, in a New York Pro three years ago that he got screwed, not this one. I don't know when he said that in which comment, but let's forget about that. This photo was posted two days ago. In Sergio's most recent physique update of only a few hours ago, there was this comment. One of the fans commented on his post. One of the fans said, apologize to Fuad and Nick, they were probably in the wrong, but it was not mean-spirited. And Sergio says, already have dealt with that privately. 
What does that mean? Did he apologize? As this fan said right here, so he says I already dealt with that, which means I apologize, basically. Obviously, it was a private conversation, so I don't know how it went. Did he apologize or not? Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Hopefully, these guys are fine right now, but I think Sergio should apologize to Nick because he did say some bad stuff and he can't get away with just saying he didn't because we all know what he meant about Fuad, about, about uh, Nick. It's all about him being uh, very angry at, at the world or at somebody in his family and now he's projecting that anger in the bodybuilding community. Yeah, what these guys did wasn't uh, correct, it was wrong, but his reaction was definitely an overreaction and he should apologize. That's just my take, whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Let's end this video with a physique update of Nick Walker, which he uploaded a few minutes ago, basically. Here you can see what he looks like 17 weeks out of Mr. Olympia. He is doing the Mr. Olympia. It would be awesome to see him against Sergio, but it seems like Sergio is not going to be trying to qualify. He said he might try to do Tampa and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. But in the comment section of that previous post, I can't find that screenshot right now, but I read also the comment. Somebody asked him, uh, can Nick beat you at the Mr. Olympia? And he said yes, basically Nick will place higher than him. So I don't know if he was sarcastic or whatever, that's what he said, he said yes. But these two guys are very close caliber, it's not blessing of Oribu versus Nick's, Nick, uh, Nick Walker, no, no, it's much, much more realistic rivalry if it uh, actually happened. I would love to see these guys at Arnold or Mr. Olympia stage. It would be really awesome. It seems like it's not gonna happen. It might, though. I would love that. Right now, Nick looks like a beast, and Sergio does too. So it's a completely different kind of physiques. I mean, uh, Nick is a little bit more blocky, beasty. His nickname is Mutant, and Sergio has aesthetics like his father used to have. So it will be an interesting uh, comparison because it's apples and oranges, and I would love to see who prevails in this battle. Maybe we're gonna see it, maybe not, but these guys are having some beef right now. I don't know if they resolved it or not, but you saw what happened. Tell me what do you think about it and who do you think would win at the Mr. Olympia or whichever show they did together. Tell me about that in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to this channel, guys. All the best and bye-bye.